kill me, then my spirit will pass into you. You will be Empress. We will be one. In the final battle of the Rise of Skywalker, Rey rises to face her grandfather, Darth Sidious. Through the strength of all of the Jedi who came before, Rey seemingly does the impossible. Acting as a literal conduit for the light side of the Force, Rey stands, harnessing this power which she had failed to master time and time again before this moment. Here, the Jedi and the Sith clash once more, the light prevailing over the dark, and balance in the Force apparently being restored again. But this battle, which on one hand appears to serve as a definitive end to the recurring conflict between the Jedi and the Sith, as well as the more personal rift between Skywalker and Palpatine, is also shrouded in a considerable deal of mystery if we take a step back and shift our perspective. So the big question that we have for this video is, why didn't Palpatine transfer his essence to Rey in The Rise of Skywalker? Remember, before Rey senses that Ben Solo has come back for her, Palpatine urges her to strike him down with all of her hatred so that his spirit can pass into her. This, a proposition Rey actually agrees to, feeling as though she is out of any other choices. This is something Sidious has done before, transferring his own essence from his original body to his clone on Exegol back in Return of the Jedi, so he knows what he's doing here. There's a strong chance that this was the same goal Palpatine had with Luke in Return of the Jedi when Luke turns to kill him only for Vader to intercept the blow. In striking her grandfather down to save those whom she cares about, Rey would be opening herself to the dark side. The Rise of Skywalker novelization explains that in this moment of contemplation, Rey actually sort of psychs herself out about turning to the dark side. She considers what it may be like to be Empress, almost trying to justify the move to herself before she does it. So while she may not know how or why this is going to work, just as we the audience don't really understand, she believes it is going to happen. The Emperor is just capable of things that we can't really fathom. This is a common theme throughout Star Wars history, he's just on a different level in many aspects of the Force. But the point is that we have every reason to believe that this is not a front by Palpatine. If Rey strikes him down, that's it. He wins, the Jedi lose, and it's over. So when Rey does ultimately destroy him, why doesn't this happen? Before we dive into that, let me point out that it actually may have. Although I don't think it's very likely, there is a small possibility that Palpatine did execute Essence Transfer on Rey, or maybe it could be a more complex process than we believe, and he's still in the process of a complete takeover of Rey's mind and body. This would certainly explain why Rey decided to bury Anakin's lightsabers in the sand. I don't like sand. Okay, but let's assume this isn't the case, because I think Rey really did succeed in The Rise of Skywalker. I don't think Palpatine will be coming back again. So let's go with that and dig into why exactly Rey was able to defeat the Emperor while avoiding his possession. First off, plot armor, obviously, right? But if we look for a more story-based answer, a canon answer, so to speak, there is an explanation here. For starters, Rey didn't really strike Palpatine down, certainly not in the way he envisioned. It wasn't by the stroke of her saber, but by her deflection of his own sinister powers back onto him that Rey comes out on top. So really, it would be more appropriate to say that Palpatine inadvertently destroyed himself rather than Rey killing him. And that's a pretty solid answer on its own. I think that makes sense, and it's more than enough explanation, but I think there may be even more to it. And since we the fandom love to theorize and break things down as much as we possibly can, let's dig deeper. The events of the movie clearly demonstrate that when Rey does get back on her feet and take Palpatine down, she is more than just Rey. What I mean by that is that in that moment, Rey is serving as a conduit for the light side of the Force and for the Jedi of the past. She's like this channel between the cosmic Force and the living Force. Now, in a way, that's what a true Jedi should become once they've freed themselves of the temptations and restrictions of the dark side, but it's different with Rey in this scenario because she has already been defeated. She doesn't have the strength to do what she does. It's only through this deep state of focus and concentration and this reaching out into the mystery of the Force that she is able to rise and take on the Emperor. And on the other side with Palpatine, I think a similar inference can be made. Palpatine claims that he is all the Sith, which I don't think is meant to be taken entirely literally, because life after death is not meant to be a thing for those who pledge themselves to the dark side, but he's doing more here than just using the dark side as he always has. I think he is drawing on some deeper powers beyond what he customarily controls on his own. 
he's sort of given himself to the dark side in such a way that he is now a part of the dark side itself. It's consumed him beyond the way that it generally consumes anyone who commits to it. It's taken him in such a way that, like I said, he's literally a part of the dark side. So with all of this in mind, the final battle between he and Rey is more than a one-on-one -on -one battle. It is the Jedi versus the Sith, and even further than that, it is the dark side versus the light. The dark side has risen once more, and it is taking control of the galaxy, attempting to undo the work of Anakin Skywalker some 30 years before. Palpatine's rejuvenation and his ascension after defeating Rey, Ben, and the Resistance would have been the final step but he fails. The Jedi help Rey to her feet, channel their power into and through her, deflect the dark powers back onto Palpatine, who is the embodiment of the dark side itself here, the light prevails, and thus balance is restored. Rey does exactly what the Jedi are supposed to do, she secures balance in the Force. Now this is not just simply the Jedi of the past using Rey to defeat the Sith, and that's the end of the story. Rey's ability to use her final ounces of strength to channel and harness this power for a short time is a testament to her power and training as well. It's not like just any Jedi could have done this, her training with Leia and her own raw strength have prepared her for this moment, and that's a part of this story too. So I think that's important to point out, but that wraps up my explanation for this question, so I am going to go ahead and wrap this video up here. If you guys have any additional thoughts or anything else to add, then feel free to leave those remarks in the comments section below. As always, keep things friendly down there. No hateful or rude comments, please. But that's it for me right now, so I hope you all have a fantastic day. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to drop a like to support the channel, subscribe to the channel if you are new, and of course, may the force be with you always.